right, now let's move to problem 3.5 from Gaskell third edition. And this is a pretty neat problem, I think. Uh, the idea is that you have two pieces of copper And one is that I'm going to call this TC for cool, is equal to zero Celsius. And one hot is equal to uh, 100 degrees Celsius. If you take these and you put them together, this is one mole. What is the final temperature? And I should draw the arrow the other way. How about that? What is the heat flow? And as a result of the heat flow, what is the uh, change in the entropy? So for this problem, you're given the heat capacity of copper as that's joule per mole Kelvin. Okay, so let's begin by uh, killing off centigrade, which is I think the most useless units of heat. I mean, if you think about it, like why centigrade? I mean, I understand that if you're looking at water, it's really important because you have zero or 100, but Kelvin is much more useful in terms of actually being able to do math. And in terms of everything else, as long as you have to convert it, you might as well you know, convert it with uh, Fahrenheit in, in which you have, uh, you know, Zero being the, the limits, the, the lower limit of, of human comfort and 100 being the upper limit. Uh, centigrade and Fahrenheit are both wrong well, on a thermodynamic perspective. So, uh, and Fahrenheit is also a lot more useful in terms of most of our uh, interactions and, and the, uh, the ranges. You know, someone says to you, we're gonna go outside and it's 28 degrees versus it's, you know, 31 degrees, there's a big difference if you're talking uh, Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Nonetheless, let's, let's go to a useful unit scale here and have uh, 273 and 373 Kelvin. Okay, so the basics of this problem are we don't know TF, but we do know that the heat transferred from the hot and the heat accepted, the negative Q from the cold have to be equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate Q transferred from hot to cold is equal to integral T hot to T final N CP T DT and for now we're going to call this a and this B, because that's just going to be something we're going to haul through the equation with us and then plug them in at the end. So that is going to be A T plus B over 2 T to the 2 evaluated at T H T F. And then we're going to have Q transferred from cold to hot, 
T cold, T final, N, C, P, T, D, T is equal to A, T plus B over two, T squared, from T cold to T final. And Q hot to cold is equal to minus Q cold to hot. Okay, so the next uh, page here is going to be just writing out this math. So zoom in here. And we'll start at the top of the page, why not? Okay, so we've got A. Oh, this is going to get old. T, F plus B over two T F, come on, F squared minus A T hot minus, minus B over two, T, ah, hot squared is equal to negative minus A, T, F minus, well, Sorry, I work this out again. A T F plus B over two T F minus A T C plus B oops, minus B over two T C squared, and then put that minus sign through. Come on. Minus sign through. You can now collect on terms and get uh, two a t f plus b over two t f squared is equal to a. A T C plus B over two T C squared plus A T H plus B over two T H squared. Multiply this all by one half. And you get A. TF plus B over 2TF squared is equal to A over 2TC plus B over 4TC squared plus A over 2TH plus B over 4TH squared. Substituting in, you get 22.64 TF plus 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3 T, come on, F squared is equal, is equal to 11.5. Come on, 11.32 times 646 plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 times 213658 
is equal to 7312.72 plus 341.85 is equal to 7654.5. Five, seven, which simplifies to TF squared plus 7303.23 TF minus two. Oh, come on. Minus two, four, six, nine, two, one, six. Point one three two four six nine two one six point three is equal to zero. So this is a b c the quadratic equation gives us. T F is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four A C. Come on, four four A C over two A is equal to minus 7303.23 plus or minus 7950.72 divided by two. So TF, is equal to either 323.74 K or minus 7627.5. Minus we know that's an extraneous root because TF has to be positive. So this is the final temperature, which to put that in other terms, 50.74 degrees C. So 0 0.74 degrees C due to, uh, well, I'm gonna call it a, Irreversible uh, entropy, right? We had a spontaneous process in which heat spontaneously flowed from the hot to the cold side, and that corresponds to this uh, irreversible process. Okay, so how much heat flowed? Well, QHC is equal to 22.64 times 323.74 minus 373 is equal to, oops, sorry, equal to is plus 6.28 times 10 to the minus three over two times three, two, three point seven, four squared minus 373 squared. That's equal to minus one, 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 five point two, five minus, oh, come on. Minus one, zero, 7.77, which is equal to minus 1223.02 joules. Q 
QHC. Uh, okay, so that's the amount of heat that flows. And that means that QCH is equal to plus 1223.02 joules. Okay, that's useful, but that's not giving us the uh, entropy. What gives us the entropy is the fact that, well, it's temperature dependent. And, and let me show you what I mean. I mean that delta AS flowing hot to cold is the integral T hot to T final CP N over T dt and delta S ah delta S cold to hot is equal to integral from C T C to T F. CP n over T dt, right? The fact that the heat capacity is temperature dependent means that a different amount, whoop, means that a different amount of entropy is generated in each of these. So substituting, delta S, HC I'll just take a the integral a over T plus B DT is equal to a natural log t plus b plus b, come on, b t plus a constant. And of course, that all goes away with the uh, definite integrals. But OK, so. Let's take delta S hot to cold and put in our, our uh, integral limits. And we get 22.64 natural log of, oh, come on, 323.0. Seven four plus six point two eight times ten to the minus three times three two three point seven four minus twenty two point six four natural log of three seventy three uh, minus. 6.28 times 10 to the minus 3 times 373 is equal to 130.86 plus 2.03 minus 134.06 minus 2.34 is equal to minus 3.0. Five one. Now, delta S cold to hot is equal to twenty two point six four natural log of three two three point seven four six point two eight times ten to the minus 
3323.74 minus 22.64 natural log of 273 minus 6.28 times 10 to the minus 3 273 is equal to 130.8, come on, 86 plus 2 point, this is looking very familiar, isn't it? 2.03 minus 127.00 minus 1.71 is equal to 4.18. which means delta S tote is equal to delta S hot to cold plus delta S cold to hot is equal to minus 3.51 plus 4.18. This is joule per Kelvin. I should keep my units coming along here. is equal to 0 0.67 joule per Kelvin. So the process of taking a hot block of copper and a cold block of copper and putting them in contact and letting them equilibrate, first off, it results in spontaneous heat flow. The spontaneous heat flow from the left into the right is equal and opposite. Makes sense. Whoops. But if you look at the final temperature that comes out, the final temperature isn't just the average, right? This is you know, zero and 100, but it's a little bit above the average. And that's because there is uh, entropy. That entropy corresponds to a change in the heat. And that entropy is positive. And when we think about the uh, second law of thermodynamics, the reason that it's hot, well, put it the other way. It's actually backwards here. The reason the heat flows spontaneously is because the entropy is increasing. So we're seeing the spontaneous process being driven by the increase in the entropy. And what we know and what we discussed in lecture is that a system out of equilibrium is going to be spontaneously driven toward a maximum in the entropy. And you can have a global maximum or a, a local maximum. So the condition of stability, I guess, is that you have a, uh, if you're plotting entropy versus your thermodynamic parameters, uh, you're going to be in a, in a region of space that's concave down. So if you're sampling that space around the point you're at, at no point do you uh, find a, a path to increase the entropy. And uh, there you have it.